So hey everyone, I'm Trevor Turnbull, CEO of SportsNetworker.com, and I'm joined on the line right now via Skype by Josh Lagan. How's it going, Josh? I'm doing great, Trevor. Thanks so much for having me here. Good stuff. So Josh, whereabouts are you right now? Are you out on the East Coast? Are you in New York? I wish I was. I'm actually in Connecticut. Oh. We just had the, the big storm, um, Sandy, but we got our power back, so that's good. And so I'm in uh, Connecticut, pretty close to Hartford. Yeah. Um, and I'm in my home library right now, so that's all the books behind me. Nice, nice, yes. Nice little backdrop you got going on there. So for anybody who uh, doesn't know Josh, you might recognize him. He's done a number of interviews for us here on Sports Networker in the past uh, three, four months or so. Uh, he was challenged by our CEO, Lewis Howes, uh, in the summertime while he was attending the Manhattan uh, Sports Business Academy to leverage the Sports Networker brand to reach out to some influential people in the industry and interview them. So talk to them about their jobs, how they got into the space, what they do on a daily basis, and then advice that they would give to others. And Josh is one of the ones that uh, saw it all the way through of doing three full articles. And he did some pretty amazing art, uh, interviews here. He interviewed just recently, we just posted this one, John Skipper, who's the president of ESPN and co-chairman of Disney Media Networks as well as the co-founder and senior VP of the Orlando Magic, Pat Williams, and the executive director of the NFL Players Association, Demora Smith. So some pretty big names in sports, Josh. Uh, let's, we'll get into all that stuff and how you landed those interviews, but let's first of all introduce you to our audience and talk about you a little bit and you know, what's your background and why did you decide that you wanted to get into sports? Well, thank you, Trevor. So my name, as you said, is Joshua Lagan, and I'm a junior at the University of Connecticut. Uh, I first decided about going into sports a while ago, back in back in high school. Um, I was in it was my senior year of high school, and I was in a marketing class. And the teacher said, "We have a representative from ESPN in the auditorium today, and if you guys get off class, you go here." And uh, I said, all right, I like ESPN, sounds good to me. No brainer. Um, I was not dressed to impress. If I remember correctly, I was in a big baggy Red Sox hoodie. Uh, but I, I went and I was, as I was walking in, I remember saying, you know, this could be interesting. And so I, I sat in the front row and um, she talked and I was, I was really inspired. And the, the meeting ended and I went to her afterward. I saw that no one was talking to her. They were just letting her pick up her stuff. And I was like, this is a great opportunity. No one's talking to her, and I've, I've never met someone from ESPN before. So um, got to talking with her, just had some questions about what she had said, and uh, she was just really encouraging and warm and really got me started on kind of looking at what the different opportunities were. Uh, um, so then I uh, fast forward about a year and a half because I studied abroad my freshman year. I uh, came back and was going to UConn and just really wanted to get into sports. So I thought about, uh, I wanted to get into ESPN, so I started uh, figuring out how, how could I do that, and so I started doing research online, which is always the best way to start, definitely recommend that to everyone. Yeah. Google knows and, everything, and, right? Yeah, this is so <laughs> true, and and Google knows everything, and LinkedIn knows everyone. There you so go. So that there was what go. I started doing, just type in UConn and ESPN into LinkedIn, yeah. and just saw who came up. And I sent messages to everybody on there and said, hey, I'm a, I guess I was a sophomore at the time. I'm a sophomore in college. just want to work at ESPN one day. just love to talk with you. And people got back to me and started setting up phone calls. And it really, it really kind of jump-started the career, just taking a little bit of initiative. I had that one contact, that one person I had met back in high school. And it's kind of that one person to push you on and, too excited, so mm -hmm. just started networking and um, was able to meet a lot of people through that. So now I work at ESPN, and it's in large part because of that. Nice, nice. That was going to be my next question for you: is uh, what are you currently doing? So you so you're interning with ESPN, is that correct? It's a little bit weird. The internship with ESPN, as the young sports business professionals listening will know, is the the hardest internship in sports to get, at least as far as I can tell. There's about 14,000 applicants for wow. 80 positions as of last year. Um, and I wanted to get the internship, but I was too young. And so ironically, I was I was networking with these people, and they were so impressed they hired me instead. Um, and so I kind of uh, 
uh, went around that, and now I'm actually applying for the internship. So trying to go from an employee to an intern, so it sounds a little <laughs> backwards, but at least in ESPN's mind, it's officer training for them. So kind of right. similar to ROTC for the military. You do their internship program, you do good, you're pretty much guaranteed a full-time position. Right, right. Um, so, so you so go through I'm the standard th process, you kind of pay your dues in the same way that everybody else does instead of bypassing it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm a statistics analyst there, and so uh, my job is really to, to track, I'll be assigned to certain games and I'll track the stats for them. And uh, if you go on ESPN.com, you see the game trackers. Uh, there's someone like me behind each one of those games putting in stats and stuff. So it's a, I'm not going to lie, it's a pretty good job. I get to watch sports for a living. So nice. Good. No doubts. Yeah, you're around the game. And if you truly love the sports, or sports in general, I should say, um, you know, it'd probably be a blast, right? Even though you're punching numbers, it's still you're doing something that you love, right? You can't do something much worse as a college student. So. Yeah, no kidding. So, Josh, tell us what... Uh, uh, what are you aspiring to? What's what's that dream job then? It's obviously not answering numbers into a spreadsheet. Um, you know, what are what's the end goal? Good question. Uh, <laughs> I've been thinking about Still it. Still sorting that out. Change. It seems to change every year, unfortunately. <laughs> as my uh, as I would say, my skill set develops, my goals become more and more ambitious. Um, so right now, I would say the dream. I would be to work at the NFL and try and expand it internationally. Um, the NFL is definitely my favorite sport. Um, and this summer when I was at the Manhattan Sports Business Academy, which we'll get to, but uh, I was able to meet the VP of NFL International and hear about his job. And was just really, really inspired to hear about how they're trying to bring, people are familiar with the London game, which just happened a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, just seeing how to build a fan group internationally. So I'd love to see myself working at an NFL one day, probably in New York City. Um, and we'll, we'll see. That's the, that's the plan for now. Yeah. Hey, it's a good thing to aspire to. And it's probably a good uh, perspective that you take on that too. You know, a lot of times people might overlook the steps that it takes to get to be the president of ESPN, right? Knowing that you got to kind of work your way up through it. And it takes time because you just need to learn all the skills that you need to be able to run a company. So it's a good perspective to take, definitely. Uh, let's talk about your experience at the Manhattan Sports Business Academy a little bit then. So you said that you met this person from the NFL through the MSBA? That's correct. Uh, the Manhattan Sports Business Academy is an eight-week summer program. Uh, it had its inaugural year last year. They're going to have their second year uh, this summer, and it's going to be great. They're talking about great things already. And it's really just an opportunity to a 360 view of sports business. So the two biggest things that I got from it was first the 360 view because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I'm still not exactly sure, but I'm figuring it out. And it was a large part because this summer I got to hear a little bit about what sports sponsorship is like, what do sports agents do, what do what sports marketing, sports law. Just hearing about all of the different uh, the different departments, the different jobs that you can have in sports business. And just figure out what's my niche, where do I fit, and so uh, it was a really great opportunity for me to kind of figure out my skill set and where it fits. And the second biggest thing was just the network. Uh, my goal coming in was to meet a hundred sports business professionals um, in the eight weeks, and so I uh, I had 150 LinkedIn connections when I went. My goal is to get to 250 of people that I had actually met, yeah. and um, I was able to do that. I was able to get 102. That was what I ended up at. And that was because we had speakers coming every night, uh, phenomenal speakers. We were able to go to the NFL headquarters, the MLS headquarters. And then at the same time, while I was doing that, I took the opportunity. Well, because I was in New York City, I reached out to my alumni at UConn who were in sports business. I emailed all the career services people at UConn and said, who do you know working in sports or People work in New York City, yeah. and so I was kind of uh, uh, was kind of doubling up in that I was using the MSPA experience, but also the, being in New York City to reach out to UConn alumni and other people they've worked into. Right. Uh, so 
just having the network and the 360 view was the biggest things I got from it. So a very interactive experience, obviously, then, right? You're, you're learning some skills, I would imagine, but also hearing from people that are actually in the business and learning from their experiences and growing your network at the same time, right? The experiences that they can give you really are phenomenal. So just one quick example. Uh, when I'm applying for the ESPN internship, and one of the things one of the recruiters told me was they said you need to work for the sports league. Just you want that on your resume. It could be a minor league team, it could be a Patriots, it doesn't matter. Just have some experience with that level. Yeah. And um, so I talked with Ben about that and um, fortunately it was right place, right time sort of scenario. He was creating a sports league. So I got to be one of the five people on the team to create a sports league and then with Another uh, guy in the program, T, and uh, some of Ben's colleagues, they got to lead the first tournament for their new sports league, the International Calisthenics Federation. And it was just an amazing opportunity, building it from nothing to having the first tournament to get. And I got to deal with athletes with writing press releases, doing event marketing. Yeah. And so just that sort of experience is completely invaluable and something you can definitely use in an interview. For sure. Yeah. No, it sounds like you got. Uh a number of different aspects that you're able to dip your hand into, right? So marketing, event planning, um, marketing. I'm sure there was some sponsorship involved too. You got to pay for these events as well, right? With Ben, there are always is. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, so let's talk about uh, these interviews that you've done for us here on Sports Networker because it kind of all ties into the same stuff. And like I mentioned, Lewis was actually one of the people that came and spoke to you guys and he had put out the challenge for anyone... Um, that wanted to meet people in the industry, pick three people who you feel are unreachable that you would love to meet and reach out to them and do an interview with them. That's, that's kind of it in a nutshell, right? At first, might sound a little bit intimidating, but what was the approach that you took on this to you know, shortlist who you wanted to talk to and then actually talk communicating with them and trying to, to line up these interviews? Well, challenge is a good word for it because it really was uh, he really did challenge us. Like, he didn't just come in and say, oh, I think it would be cool if you guys did this. This is something I've done with other students. He said, I've given this to students all across the U.S. and no one has ever been able to do it. Right. And I don't think you guys can either, was essentially the, the way he was saying it. And so yeah. uh, he said, who thinks they can do it? And, um, and so people raised their hand. And I'm going to be honest, Trevor, I didn't raise my hand. No. Um, I didn't raise my hand. I thought I was too busy with the different people we were meeting and creating a new sports league. I just I didn't feel like uh, we had the time to do it. And, and and Lewis looked at me and said, "Well, you don't think you can do it?" And uh, <laughs> called and the So he he challenged me, um, and so it kind of became a pride thing at that point. I said, "All right, I don't know this guy, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make time. I'm gonna make time. We're gonna see if we can do this." And so. Um, he, he kind of had to kick me in the butt a little bit, but I'm so glad he did because the biggest thing that helped me be able to do that successfully is just being fearless. That's the biggest advice I can give anyone willing to do it. You yeah. have to, like, I knew you could reach out to people. I remembered that from um, getting the ESPN job through LinkedIn, but I thought maybe, maybe, maybe managers or, like, entry-level people you could talk to, but never in my wildest dreams would I thought you could email John Skipper and actually get a response. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started by going on Sports Business Daily's 40 Under 40 and just started going down the list reading who I was interested in. And so I, um, I emailed about 15 people, I believe. Yeah. And uh, I actually got responses from about 50%, probably seven or eight of them responded, which, yeah. which blew my mind. I was... <laughs> I was shocked. Yeah. When I got the email from John Skipper, I wanted to print it off and frame it. And I was <laughs> like, no, I can't do that. I have to meet this guy and interview him. Yeah. So uh, I was like, can't, can't have that perspective. Leave fan, uh, fanboy aside. Um, and so just having the courage to reach out is, uh, I would say, the biggest step. And then after that, just um, everyone wants to give back which was the thing I realized. Like, yeah. as a student, we have this invaluable time right now where people just want to invest in us and pour into us, and then when we succeed, 
see that you want to celebrate with us. And I thought that, as again, was only with entry-level people, but it's not. Even the people at the top, they still want to feel the joy of seeing someone that they invested in have some success. Yeah. So right. they, they just have less time to do it. Yeah. Uh, so I got, fortunately, I got three yeses. I had about three or four people say, um, not right now, or... Um, appreciate you reaching out, but don't really have the time. Um, but just the fact that they responded at all was was awesome, and definitely worthy of being brave. Yeah. Okay, let's break it down a little bit here now. How did you go? So you saw this top forty under forty list on Sports Business Journal, and said, "Here's my top fifteen that I want to contact." Those emails, I'm guessing, weren't right there on the article, right? You had to do a little bit of digging to find them. This is true, yes. Yeah. So Lewis gave us a very, uh, he gave us a simple kind of format, and it, it was similar to what I had used reaching out to people through LinkedIn. Um, so I kind of had a good idea of what he was saying, of what worked and what didn't, uh, based on my previous experience. And um, one of the things that I really tried to emphasize was seeing if we had any mutual contact. Mm -hmm. So I was able to use Ben a little bit um, for some of them and say, hey, like you met Ben, because Ben would tell me which ones he knew, and there's a lot of little things I put in, which honestly, I don't know how much of a factor they played, so one of them was people they knew, there was a little bit of flattery, um, mm -hmm. I don't know whether they cared or not about that, but I, I put it in there, yeah. uh, I really think at the end of the day, it was just, I was real with them, and painted myself as, I'm a student, and I I want to learn from your wisdom. You've had this great experience. And then I would point to specific stuff. I would say, I really appreciated how, so with Pat Williams, I was like, you became a general manager at 28. Like, I teach me, mold me. Like, how did how did you do that? Like, I yeah. just want to, I want to learn from that. And I feel like when I was able to meet these people, they really appreciated that and they responded to that because they saw a kindred spirit. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't try and be fake. Don't try and, butter them up, like they don't they don't care about any of that. They get a thousand they get thousands of emails a day. Just be real and try and show them that you're someone who just cares about them and then they'll care about you. Yeah. Yeah, it's no it's great advice because it's you know, you gotta put yourself in their shoes. They're they're a person. They're just a person like you, right? And they were in the exact same spot as you at one point and if they share the same passion they'll get it, right? They they'll just get it. So um, but speaking of the questions then too, so, so you've gone through the process of sourcing these people out, you found their email address, you carefully thought of what you were going to say to them, they say yes, now what? You got to do some research well, or what, what, what was your approach? It was actually pretty easy for me because the people that I got, um, so Dee Marie Smith, as I said, I was, I'm a big NFL fan and so I'm a big fan of Dee Marie Smith because he kept the NFL alive. He was he's the executive director of the NFL Players Association. Yeah. And so I nice. kind of had some questions and then it just became kind of so so tell me about what it was like. So you were in that um, so one of the questions I asked him, I was like, So it was paint the setting for me. Is it you in a locked room with Roger Goodell <laughs> trying to fight it out and whoever like one person emerges with a signed contract, like what is the paint the setting for me? And I think they, I think he appreciated that because it showed that I knew him, I knew what he had been through, I knew his experience, but at the same time I was intelligent about it. And so some of the questions I asked a lot about uh, what are their backgrounds, how they got to where they were, because I'm trying to emulate that. So it definitely started with that. And then some of, um, so like John Skipper, I think he was a little surprised by this, but I asked him, what were you proudest of? Mm. I mean, I, I want to know that. I mean, he's the president of ESPN, so like, was it, wh which which moment in his life was it? That, I just found that story of stuff interesting. So I think the question surprised them a little bit. Uh, got yeah. Some interesting responses when I emailed them originally. But, yeah. Uh, well, I think you brought up some good points on the approach to take in these types of interviews, too. And that's really why, uh, you know, it's part of why we want to interview yourself and, uh, and Lucas and just find out the approach that you took. Because um, the questions that you're asking are really just asking them to talk about themselves, right? 
And everybody loves yeah. to talk about themselves. They want to tell their story. They want to talk about the hardships that they went through and the successes that they had and the failures and the successes. So um, it's a good approach to take, especially when you know a little bit about them. And I think that's one of the, again, you know, Google knows everything. LinkedIn knows everyone. You just hop on those two platforms alone and you can find out what you need to come in prepared for these interviews. So good on you for that. Um, one more question for you. So you've already given a bunch of tips. You've kind of phrased your answers a lot of times in, if I was you, this is how I would do it, But uh, which is awesome. Uh, but let's talk about that one tip. So do you have a one tip that you would give to somebody? Somebody who's just starting out or maybe somebody who's even in their third or fourth year of university already and they haven't really seen any progress yet. They're kind of waiting for a, an opportunity to fall on their lap. What would you say to them? Well, first of all, the opportunity is not going to fall on your lap. So <laughs> if you're waiting for it, you're going to be waiting a while. The, the biggest tip I can give you is, is network. Um, I definitely feel like that's, where, that's how I've gotten to where I am. And the thing is, when you network, reach out to older people and ask them, like specifically have a conversation and say, will you be my mentor? So the biggest reason I've gotten to where I am is because of my mentor. So uh, Megan Hanrahan, Rosen Durant. Uh, Mark Stampino and Ben Sterner, these are four people who who took me aside and said, I want to invest in you, like you have potential, uh, uh, let's, let's grow you and let's see you have some success together. And that, that, that's life changing, it's career changing. Mm -hmm. And the reason I got those opportunities is because I reached out to all of them, not really knowing what was going to happen, but just trying to build my network and then we developed friendships. And so, the biggest advice I can give you is to have courage and reach out to whoever, whoever you want, whoever you, um, whoever you think you could create a good relationship with and help each other out. And the best thing about the internet now is there's, there's thousands of students like us. So to the young sports business professionals out there, I'm here, Lucas is here, there's, there's tons of us, uh, Mark is another one, and Alex at Sports Networker. We're all just trying, we're all on the same team. We're all yeah. trying to build our careers together. And so, so we're all connecting with each other to connect with us. So I know, I know you're going to ask about ways to uh, connect with me as the last question. But Let's, let's get um, on that then. <laughs> just, I definitely, the biggest advice is just reach out to people, build your network, and don't make it about selfish stuff. Just try and develop friendships, and, and, and you'll go far. Perfect. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll one-up on Lewis's challenge here. I say anybody who's willing to take on this challenge, like, reach out to us, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn. Let me know if you want to take this challenge. We'll give you some help. We'll give you some guidance. Um, you know, you'll be able to do stuff like Josh and Lucas have done here and connect with some people that you might not have thought was possible before. So the challenge is given again. Anybody out there? Uh, so, Lu so Josh, sorry, not Lucas. Josh, uh, how can people connect with you online, man? Well, the best way is through email. So my email is joshlagan at gmail.com. It's very simple. It's just my name. So that's, uh, I always respond to email. So through that or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter, but not that much. I tend to just read other people's stuff. So if you can yeah. connect with me on there, but uh, you probably won't see me being too active. So definitely LinkedIn and email. And uh, like, like Trevor was saying, I mean, with this challenge, Feel free to reach out to me or Lucas. Like we'd love to help you if uh, that's something that you think you want to do. So perfect. So you give your email address out right now. You might not be getting the thousand emails a day that the president of ESPN is getting, but uh, I think you might find it a little tougher to respond to everyone then. But good on you for for putting it out there and would be willing to help out other people too. Obviously, you're just you know trying to climb the ladder here yourself too, but. It's a good perspective, a good attitude to take to, to want to help others too, right? It's going to help you climb up that ladder even faster. So, Josh, thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. Hope that we can see some more interviews from you on Sports Networker in the near future. And uh, we'll keep in touch. Hopefully we'll meet up one of these days. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Trevor. And thank you to you and Lewis for investing in me and helping me go to the next level because that's what Sports Networker is all about, uh, building our sports network and and growing up and growing up uh, growing up career so thank you so much Trevor perfect thanks Josh